mayor of the city of Burlington and is the only non-Democrat and non-Republican mayor uh, elected in partisan elections in the United States, and as somebody who is not ashamed to say that he is a radical, uh, there are two basic areas in which I try to do my job as mayor. The first is a reasonably conventional area, which I think every serious mayor in the United States tries to do his or her job, and that has to do with basic services. Uh, like the people of every city and town in America, the people of Burlington are entitled to a well-run city and a city that is run cost-effectively. Uh, we are entitled to decent streets, sidewalks, sewer systems, wastewater plants, job opportunities, reasonable utility rates, reasonable tax rates, good police and fire departments, and all the other services that people in cities uh, deserve. And I think we have done a good job in that area, and I'll speak to that in a moment. But there is another area that I also think is important for a mayor to speak out. And here I think I am unusual. I think most mayors do not speak out on that. And that is the broad question of literally the fate of the human race and the whole question of economic justice. And my feeling here, although I get criticized for this quite often, is that if mayors and governors and ordinary citizens do not begin to speak up on the issues of war and peace or economic justice, there may not be streets or sidewalks to worry about. There may not be the least problems to worry about because the planet may come to an end. And I think it's absolutely imperative, and I want to say very honestly that if re-elected, I intend to keep speaking out on the issue of war and peace, on the insanity of the arms race, of the inevitability of a nuclear war if those trends are not stopped on the absurdity of a $275 billion military budget at a time when low-income people are in desperate condition, at a time when the President of the United States, in order to expand the military machine by $30 billion, is cutting back or proposing to cut back on federal revenue sharing, which will raise local property tax, doing away with student loans, doing away with child nutrition programs, freezing Medicare payments, basically going to war not against the Soviet Union, but its very own people. And I think it's absolutely imperative that all citizens, including mayors, continue to speak on that and continue to have a vision that someday, maybe, just maybe, if not in 10 years, maybe in 100 years, we will live in a society in which some people do not have billions of dollars while other people have nothing. We have heard from all of the spokesmen tonight, and they're all right. They talk about the serious problems of rising electric rates, high living costs in the city of Burlington, and they're absolutely right. In the long run, in my view, in the final analysis, these problems are not going to really be dealt with in Burlington or Los Angeles or Houston, Texas, unless there is a radical restructuring of the economy of the United States and until ordinary people begin to take control of their lives. I speak on that issue. I am criticized for it, but I will continue to speak on it. Neglected by city government. On North Street, 
uh, storefront after storefront was empty. Uh, housing was not being rehabilitated. We have now rehabilitated many units of housing. North Street today looks in better shape, far from being perfect, let me tell you. Many, many problems remain there. It is far better shape than it has been for many, many years. Property tax situation. Four years ago, before I was elected mayor, the Democrats and Republicans on the Board of Aldermen asked for a 65 cent property tax. That was overwhelmingly defeated, I opposed it. Since that time, we have got a 25 cent tax increase, and since that time, the only other property tax increase that we asked for was a 16 cent property tax increase dedicated to the streets. We have an excellent record in property tax reform. Also, the city of Burlington is leading the fight statewide against the regressive and unfair property tax, and we are fighting, and in Burlington, I think we are leading that fight for progressive, intelligent alternatives to the property tax, and we're making some progress in that direction. Lastly, I think we've made some good success in providing far more social programs uh, for low-income people, for kids, for the elderly, than existed in the city before. We have a very effective youth office, which among other things, has started a daycare center, a beautiful daycare center, in the basement of Memorial Auditorium. We now have after-school programs. We have youth Youth newspaper, which is really a lovely thing, seeing kids coming together to put out their newspaper. We have free health clinics. We are making progress in the area of social services, although we have an enormously long way to go, and we are scared to death of Reagan's cuts, because if they come into us, many of those programs will be destroyed. The city of Burlington, for the first time probably in municipal history in the state of Vermont, has used its city attorney's office to fight against the telephone company's outrageous increases. Mrs. Gallagher correctly talked about the fights that we're making against cable television in order to prevent the 90% increase in rates. And while we're dealing with electric rates, I urge you to come down tomorrow night to the City Hall Auditorium, where the Public Service Board will be meeting and listening to a proposal of city government in which we intend to lower, lower electric rates for residential users by 28%. It is true that large consumers will be paying substantially more. This is based on a number of reasons, I'll be proud, happy to discuss this later, but we are attempting desperately to protect low-income people, the senior citizens, and people who cannot afford ever escalating uh, costs uh, of their electricity. Uh, there's much more to be said, but I thank you for your attention now.
Arlington have shown extraordinary courage in bucking the national tide and saying that they want a local government which is going to stick up for the ordinary people, for the elderly, and which is going to say no to national priorities which talk about spending billions more for the military while we're cutting programs for the elderly and the sick and the homeless. And if we are the only community in the United States of America which is going to show a little bit of sanity, then so be it. We're proud of it. Thank you. 